So the thing is, once you know the name, how do you get to that other name, right? So that is the next topic, Jigbee routing. There are four methods, AODV, DSR, tree hierarchical routing, and many to one route. So now there is even more um, interesting thing coming up, networking style, AODV, ad hoc, on demand, distance vector routing. Very popular, very famous. If you say somebody that you know wireless and you know what wireless routing, this is the first thing we have talked about the routing. There are two of them, very famous, AODV and DSR. We are going to discuss them right now today. So there are several words here. Ad hoc, second thing is on demand and then it is distance vector. Some of you may remember distance vector, some of you may not. So distance vector is one kind of routing when we do in you know in 473 we teach about routing so there is another one is called link state right so this is distance vector um, and um, on demand means this is um, the route is prepared when we need it if I don't need it I don't need to know the route to you know if I don't need to talk to him I don't need the route for him if when I need it then I need to figure out how to get there on demand okay and so the routing table does not keep the path so in the routing table I didn't all I need to keep is that to get there what is the next hop best next hop and then they know to get there what is the best next hop and so on and so forth and when we try to find the route it's not just that only I will know what is the best route let's just take an example of a loam today so just how what is the best um, route to alone, everybody on the path will know what is the best route to alone because we will figure it out in such a way that whoever is in the path will know that that is the best route. So I need to know is my best hop and then they know their best hop and they know their best hop. Okay. So the way it happens is that I send a RREQ, R -R 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 request, route request, flood means I send it to everybody, to all the neighbors and the neighbors will send it to their neighbors and their neighbors and their neighbors. So it will basically go to the whole network, all the people in the network. And it will have the source address, this is the address mine that I need to know, the destination address, the path to that address. Rec ID, this is my request number 5. So if I know request number 5, then next time when I want to know the path to the same thing, I will say request number 6. So you know this is not the old request, this is a new request. Okay, so the every request when I do, I increment this second number, rec ID. Source sequence number. And this is, then there is a sequence number is more like a time. And the destination sequence number. So basically, instead of keeping the time as 2 o'clock, 53 minutes, 23 seconds, we just keep a number. So we say, okay, I have at time 5, and time 5 doesn't have to be really a 5 hours or 5 seconds, just number 5. At the fifth time when I try to find, this is the thing that I had, okay? Sequence number, source number, and the destination, for the destination also there is a time, and the half limit, half count, that it was at 10 half from me. So if somebody finds out, that they know a better time a better number of halves then they will say oh no no I know you know from time 5 I know from time 6 and here is the number if it is time 6 number is of course better than time 4 number even if it is longer half because the old information is no longer good so either the information is new which is obtained from the sequence number or the number of halves is low so suppose from time 5 I am saying that I think he is at half 10 and he said no no I know a path to him at half Eight, then that is better. So there are three things, right? The times and the halves. That is the distance. All right. The rec ID is simply the request ID. So if you get the same request again, number five again, you can throw it away because you already took care of number five. Yeah. So I'm um, so, I'm so what, um, I don't I don't know how uh, how devices know what their neighbors are. Does it depend on the like do they keep an internal, does each object have its, a list of its neighbors? So let's just assume in all of this 
that we have the general mesh topology. Okay, so this will apply to tree for sure. In the case of tree, the life is much easier, and we will just use the last one, which is the tree. There is a tree to tree tree routing. That is much simpler, and that's what probably generally used anyway. But this is more for mesh. Okay, in the mesh case, when you come up, a mesh is formed. Okay, a mesh is formed, and um, it gets formed basically by you trying to find your neighbors who you can talk to directly. So you say, okay, can I talk to you? And it's quite possible that I can talk to her, him, and him, and then her over there. Okay, four. Even though you know it's far away, but somehow there's a direct uh, line of sight, right? So those are my four neighbors. Similarly, you whoever you can talk to, those are your four neighbors, five neighbors, three neighbors, whatever. So that's how we know. That's how we know. So we know the neighbors only. Uh, I was just concerned, like, what and there is no. We are not assuming any coordinator. We are not assuming anything else. Yeah, these are random assignments. It doesn't matter really. So all I need to know is that five, seven, and three are my neighbors. So this is for the mesh with no coordinator. Nothing is basically whoever can talk. I can listen their beacon or their their connection, whatever signal, hellos or something like that. They are the list. Okay. All right. So source sequence number is a clock counter incremented when the request is sent, <coughs> and the registration sequence number is the most recent time when we had known about that. If if we never had heard about that destination, then we put a zero. So what happens is intermediate nodes. If they have a better information, which is better because either they have better time or better number of hops, they send it to us, and uh, that is called request reply, and that is called route reply R rep. All right, and R rep will have the destination sequence number, hop count, and the lifetime. So the lifetime basically is that this information is good for the next. Whatever time we set it up, because you cannot use the information that you got today tomorrow, right? For tomorrow, you will have to probably redo the whole thing on demand. So there is a lifetime. Okay, destination sequence number is the from the from the destinations counter and all that. Intermediate nodes record nodes from both R rep and R rec. So the message requests are going like this. It will go to the end and then it will come back. So the optimal path actually it will, it will show you in a minute example. So when it goes, it goes everywhere. But which of the first reaches there, which one reaches there first, is, is the optimal, right? Is the best. And so when it comes back from there, everybody on the path will record that okay, this is right. So now I'm all set. Then I don't need to know all other responses because they're all unoptimal. Okay. So intermediate nodes record the nodes from both R rep and R rec. If there is a lower cost path, we know that is the reverse path. Backward route to destination is recorded if sequence number is higher or the sequence number is in the same and the hops are lower. So either your hop is lower or the sequence number is higher means you have a better, recent more recent information. Old entries are timed out. And AOD support AODB supports only symmetric links. So everywhere we assume that if you are from one half from me, I am one half from you. That's it. And so it's all symmetric. But in the real world, it is quite possible that um, it's very easy to get from me to you <coughs> because I am a very high-powered node, but very expensive to get from you to me because you are a battery node, right? So the paths, you know, it is you know just. There could be differences anyway. So here's an example. So this is the network, and one wants to know the path to ten. So one says, "Does anybody have a route to ten fresher than one?" This is my broadcast number one. So basically, this is the request number one, and. This is the source time sequence one. Then one sends floods it, so it goes to two, three, and four. <coughs> two, three, and four don't have any information, so they send it to all their neighbors. So two will send it to one, five, and seven. Two will send it to one, five, and seven. See, see, it goes back to one, and three will send it to whom? One and five, and four will send it to 
1 and 6. Now, 1 will look at that request and say, oh, this is old because, I mean, anyway, 1 doesn't have any more information anyway. So, it, it, it doesn't have to, it is the same request number 1. So, it will just, it knows that I have seen request number 1 from 1. So, it is going to throw it away. Now, 5, 6 and 7 are going to do the same thing. They are going to send it to their neighbors. And these 2, 3 and 4 will throw that away again because they have seen that request number 1 from node 1. Right, and so on and so forth until it reaches 10. When the 10 sees the first request from number 1, it says, oh, okay, I know this artist path, I am right here. And it will tell 9 where it comes from and then 9 will send it wherever that artist path is. Right. Now, um, the thing is that 10 will receive lots of those requests because every one of these will come back right, right there, right? At least it will get one from 7 and one from 8 and one from five actually, right? The rest of them will be discarded because they have the same source sequence number, so request ID number, right? The very first one will get answered. And here is the whole table and you have to learn how to make this table, okay? This is clearly going to be in the exam. So, the, the way this table is made is that we start this is just the packet numbers, but basically we start from node 1. Node 1 sends out 3 packets, 1 to 2 to 3 and 4. All of them are Rx. The request ID is 1, the source sequence number is 1, the destination sequence number is 1, the hops is 1, and it says, basically I am looking for the destination number 1, right? Destination is 1, the sequence is 1 and the hops is 1, and um, basically what will happen is these are all 2, 3 and 4 when they receive it, when 2, 3 and 4 receive it, they know that this is all brand new, they have not seen it before, so they will forward it, right? And they remember that it came from 1. This one, they, this much they remember that this came from 1, right? Alright, so now what happens at 2? 2 will send it to 7, 2 will send it to 5, and 2 will send it to 1. 2 will send it to these places, 3 places, right? Now 1 will discard it, and 7 will say there is new and 5 will say it's new. So, they will broadcast it further and they will remember it came from 2. Actually, what they are remembering is that the shortest path to 1 is 2. So, while 1 is looking for 10, but the message is coming from 1, so this is what they are recording. That if in time I want to go to 1, I will go through 2. Now, then we go through... Um, 3, uh, sorry, node 3, see, node 3 was here, right? So, node 3 will send it to 1 and 5 and same way both of them are discarded. Then 4 will send it to 1 and 6. I think one of them, 6 will be broadcast and it will remember that it came from 4. Right? So, the shortest path to 1 is 4. And so on and so forth. Some duplicate will be discarded, but the new ones will be done, but it will come to 10. 9 to 10. Here, this is the first time the 10 has heard this thing and it says, okay, uh, I am going to record that whenever I want to go to 1, number 9 is the closest place and it will create a new R rep, which is shown here. From 10 to 9, there is a route reply. Right? Everything else will be discarded. Okay, so let's see, 6 will send it um, not to itself. So, 6 will send it to 4 and 8. So, so just let's change that number to 4. 6 to 4 and 6 to 8. Correct it in your slides. I will correct it later on. And you make a note of it. Huh? Okay. Good question. Okay. So, all right. So, now the, the, here is what happens to the rep. The rep goes from 10 to 9. Now, 9 had made a note that if I want to go back to 1, I need to go through, where was the 9? And 9 knows that the first one was 7 or something. Whatever it recorded before, it sends it to that one. So, in this case, 9 sends to 7. 7 sends it to 2 and 2 sends it to 1. So, the response comes back by the shortest path. Yeah. One is the distance sequence is 6. Uh, which one are you talking? Distance sequence number? Yeah, uh, 6. 
Yeah. Now that is arbitrary. Basically, everybody keeps their sequence numbers. Right? So the destination happened to have the number 6 in a sequence number. It might have, you know, done something in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. So it doesn't really matter. But what it is saying is that the destination says that my time is 6. At time 6, I am closest to 9. So now everybody will record that time in their table that at time 6, this is the path. Right? And in fact, in the, in the other cases also, they will record the same thing at that time 1. The shortest path to 1 is whatever they are recording here. They will just keep the se source sequence number and see source as time. So at source as time 1, this is the shortest path. At, at destination time 6, this is the shortest path. So the clocks are not, I mean, basically same number. There is no synchronization of clock. So that number 6 is arbitrary. Alright, any question about this? Can you make a table like this? No. Yeah, it requires practice. <laughs> so, even if you are not taking the exam, you might want to practice this one because, because I mean, you know, when you go for a job and you say, well, I didn't take the second exam, that is not going to count. <laughs> not everything is for grades. So, just for knowledge, you really need to know AODB, ADSR, and that's why I am teaching you here. S few things to notice here. One thing is that um, it is flooded. So, we don't remember basically whom not to send. For example, they could have optimized that we don't, uh, 3 doesn't have to send it to 1. It could have sent it to just, you know, but it doesn't. It just sends blindly because it's just simpler to everybody, right? Okay, try it out. But you, you really need to practice a lot. By the way, I mean, um, this is my third update of this table and now I have to make a fourth one <laughs> because there is one error right yes, sir. yeah Actually, uh, I, I would like to ask from 9 to 8 you said 4 hops why it's not 5 9 to 8 uh, number in 19 number 19 9 Back it out to, five. to 8 it says number of hops is 4 so the number of hops is clearly increasing first half 1 Second half this, third half this, this is fourth half. I mean, uh, I counted, uh, as you said, how the difference between 9 and 1 is 5 here. No, so let's see, from 1 to 8. If you want to go from 1 to 8, that is 4 halves. 1 to 8, 1, sorry, make a space. This is 1 half, 2 half, 3 halves, right? 6 to 8, whatever comes from 6 to 8 is 3 halves. When it comes from 1, 2, 3, this is 3 halves. 1, 2, this is 3 halves. But it could also come from 1, 2, 7, 9, and 8. This is the one you are talking about. That came with 4 halves. 1 to 8 means 8? No, 1, it started from 1, reached to 8, reached to 8 by a 9. That particular message took 4 halves. Okay, the way, it, there are many ways it, would, it could have come. It could have come 1, 3, 5, 9, 8. 1, 2, 7, 9, 8. Either case it is 4 halves. It is discarded anyway. You see? So this one, this 9 to 8, which is 4 halves, it is duplicate anyway. Because, because, before, because there was another one. So it is not that there are 4 halves between 9 and 8. There are 4 halves between 1 and 8. By that by the route that that message and the, and you can figure that out if you go back how did 9 get it here right so if you go back to the 9 9 got it through this and it will got through 5 and so on and so forth right so it took 4 halves does that answer your question yes. huh? yeah. okay alright good and good thank you for checking <laughs>